Okay, this is it. I've waited far too long for the Alexander Technique, the first lesson. Why, you may well ask. Partly because I didn't want to reveal the secrets of the Alexander Technique. Some people will say you should pay for this kind of material. I just thought, what the hell? It's so interesting. You get to see what your first Alexander Technique lesson was like, or will be like, and that is worth its weight in gold. I think it's good to be able to see an Alexander teacher in action. Also, I'm going to introduce the concept of inhibition, just the same way the great Walter Carrington used to do it. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of Walter Carrington. He was a rare teacher. Something really special. You will also see the way a person changes during a lesson. Amazing. Let's just dive in. But before that, if you like this video, subscribe. If you like this video, leave a comment. Like the video. I need to feel worth it. Hi, so well, thanks very much for, for coming today, Dom. This is your first Alexander lesson, isn't it? Now, just uh, point those feet a little bit uh, outwards mm -hmm. and then just a little bit wider with the feet there. That's it, very good. That's it, just makes it a bit easier. Good, so, now, have you ever done the uh, Alexander technique before? No, I haven't, I haven't at all. I think just from maybe little bits and bobs that you've taught us over the years, little bits, little bits. <laughs> yes, I might nothing. point out that Dom is my niece and that this is her first Alexander lesson, although I might have kind of uh, moaned about their posture over the years as they grew up. Um, <laughs> but uh, the thing is that, Dom, uh, you've done a lot of drama, a lot of acting, uh, and uh, you're also a director, aren't you, uh, of theatre, and you're a s singer, you've done musical theatre, you've done classical singing, uh, you've done ballet, how the hell have you not done Alexander Technique and all that? I don't know. I don't, I I don't know. It's I not really don't. Taught, I tell you. Is it? Well, I think it is now. A friend of mine did a master's um, in acting and they did a whole module on it. And I was jealous. Yeah, quite. But I think in musical theatre, especially, it's much, it's, it could be really useful, I think, because of uh, singing and sound and how we can hold ourselves back physically. So I yeah. think it should be. Should be more of a thing. Well, you'll find that all the sort of uh, top drama schools, the Royal Academy of Music, etc., etc., do the Alexander Technique. Mm. But uh, and of course, a lot of my clients are actors, musicians, uh, piano players, and etc. You know, classical pianists and so on. But the thing is, yes, it is a rare uh, thing, really, a sort of a slightly rarefied thing. Um, but uh, I think yes, it's getting more uh, of a name for itself now because people, you know, they're. They're stressed out. They want to come back to their bodies. They want to, you know, feel a bit better about things. And of course, that's what we do. We make people feel better in the end. Now, the first thing we're going to uh, learn about today is the weight-bearing points. Now, do you know where they are? In your feet? Yes, that's right. Well done. Um, most people don't actually get that funny enough, so that's, that's quite good that you knew that. Uh, or that you guessed that, I suppose. Um, now, just... Take a deep breath there. Yeah. Do you forget to breathe, do you think? Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm doing it. I write signs around the house saying, breathe. Breathe, <laughs> yes. Just... We do um, forget to breathe, and we forget to breathe. We tighten up the muscles in the body, and as we tighten up, we tighten up the breathing as well. We stop breathing. Now, uh, back to the weight-bearing points, though. The weight-bearing points are... Effectively, <clears throat> they are uh, behind the big toe, behind the small toe, and the heel. So it sort of forms a kind of triangle on the feet. And uh, you can't really see the feet there, but, but you basically uh, have weight-bearing points, uh, three weight-bearing points in each foot. And what happens is that most of us think about the weight-bearing being the balls of the feet and the heel. If you think about it, that's not very stable. So when we go into sort of thinking about the legs as being more tripod-like, you know, having three weight bearing points, we're more secure. So I want you to think about that. And I want you to think about how, because of the uh, weight bearing being so balanced, that enables you to lengthen upwards more. And you'll find it, if you're watching this uh, now at home or wherever you are, just stand up, find those weight bearing points, and see how, if you can really get that connection to the floor, you lengthen upwards quite naturally. It's easier to gain height. So we think about the weight-bearing points and we say, weight-bearing points, 
full height. And that reminds us that we need to uh, be thinking about weight bearing points. OK, now, of course, as a singer, you are aware of the way in which we have to get that contact with the floor and so on. How has that been put across to you before that's, that's sort of different from the way that I'm saying it now? Well, it is definitely a challenge. I think, you know, the focus in singing is often, you know, on dropping the breath. Um, yeah. focusing on the diaphragm and, right. and, the, and the dropping and the, and the lifting of that. Mm. However, I think what came out of professional training um, every day at drama school, yeah. uh, and our acting teacher used to say, breathe from your asses." <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. Okay. laughs> I didn't know really what she meant, but actually it's, it's, as soon as you think even lower, um, you're thinking through the floor really, and, and you realise yeah, it's right. a channel you know, you do you know endless breathing sessions at, at you know at drama school and with musical theatre, but mm, mm. until you really are doing it every day and it becomes second nature, and, and you realise that you are getting in your own way often. Sure, sure. Of well, I think the point is that awareness. there are a lot of different approaches, and what we want to do is find the one that works. And and I think that just thinking about weight bearing points in this way, I mean, in fact, to be honest, I've done a lot of drama myself and singing and so on, and no one's ever asked me to breathe through my arse before, but I, I don't mind. I don't mind <laughs> if it works, you know. But, it's just a thought, <laughs> and it's funny. It's funny yeah. how a thought can change. But but yes, you know, one thing, you know, you don't even have to consciously move. Like absolutely, saying, absolutely, and of course, Alexander technique is all about that thought process. And I think keep it keeping it simple, weight bearing points, full height is a good start, a good place to start. Now, what I want you to do now is think about that length going upwards. And we're going to sit down in the chair in a different way to usual. We're going to maintain length. So just soften the backs of the knees for me. Mm -hmm. And as you go into the chair, you just let those knees go. And then we go into the chair. We come back off the hips there. That's it, off the hips. Oh, yeah. And keep up, keep up. That's it. And of course, now what you'll see is that you're in the chair in a much more lengthened way than you would normally be. Okay? You don't normally sit like this, right? No. OK. And of course, you don't want to sit like this. Uh, people often say, oh, do I sit like this all the time then? No. This is an exercise. Yeah, this is an Alexander Technique exercise for lengthening the spine. What I will say, though, is that if you practice, if say you're working in an office and you have to sit there for eight hours a day uh, in front of a computer, um, uh, sit like this for five or ten minutes of the hour. A very good exercise if you can really get the length coming up if you can really see what's happening and get and, and you're doing Alexander lessons really you know you'll practice mm. this and you'll get the benefit of it but you'll see that actually uh, sitting like this is quite difficult mm. you'll feel the pressure in your hips yeah I, yeah? yeah because you're not used to it you yeah. see okay now so we have uh, this idea of the weight bearing points and the full height in the chair we're sitting on our sitting bones, and that is uh, what is known as the ischius tuberosities. Lovely word there for you. Now, can you feel your sitting bones? Yes. Yes. The sitting bones are uh, very well designed uh, for sitting on, and we should feel them in the left and the right. And that is basically the weight bearing points in the seat seated position. Okay. And now we're going to think about another concept, which is very important to Alexander technique, which is called inhibition. Now. I was trained uh, at a place uh, in Holland Park by Walter Carrington. And what we're doing here today is a first lesson. This is the very first lesson. Um, and this is the same first lesson that I give to everybody. And effectively, Walter Carrington, when we graduated, used to hand us an A4 sheet. And on that A4 sheet wasn't much written. But what was written was this thing we're going to do now, which I've stuck with for many, many years because it's so, it so works. Now, what uh, usually happens is that when a teacher tells you to do something, you do it. Of course you do. In this situation, the teacher is going to tell you to stand up and you're going to say no. <laughs> OK, right. So you're going to say no and you're going to do, not do what the teacher asks you to do. Now, so stand up. No. Uh, yeah, but you did go to stand up. <laughs> OK, so 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 you will say no. Now, why will you say no? What are you saying no to? Well, if you don't say no, you're likely to get up in the way that you always get up. Now, let's just think about that. How would you get up normally? Okay. Through the, well, up. probably through the, uh, through the feet, I guess, maybe, but then 
you almost sometimes stamp up, don't you? You're kind of like, yes. right, I'm getting up, and then you yeah, like, yeah. So jump, you, might, you almost jump up, don't you? So you might push oh, up with the feet, you might jump out of the chair in mm. quite a fashion, yeah, for, forcing yourself a bit, yeah. That's right. Okay, so what, what we're saying by saying no to standing up is we're saying, I'm going to take a moment to think about how I'm going to do this, yeah? Now, inhibition is a very, very, it's really the meat of the technique. It's really what we, um, uh, you know, it's the main sort of thing uh, that we learn in the technique. Uh, but it's one of those things that is very elusive. It takes a lifetime to learn to stop. Okay, so just stand up for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, there we are. <laughs> exactly, you see, there's this great impulse, isn't there, to do what the teacher says. But now I want you to really just say very clearly, so we know we're on the same page, no. No. Yeah, that's it, no. Now I ask you to start, you say no. No. Now, uh, let's just say you said no, and then you just start it like that. <laughs> mm. So how, how is that different? Uh, yes, there's a, there's a forward momentum to it like up and forward through, like, yeah, sort of forehead led. That's it. Well, yes, you say forehead led. It's the it's the head that leads. That's right. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, forward and up, very good. Yeah, that's that's something that we're going to be talking about in other lessons. Now, just bring the feet slightly together. There. They've gone a little bit apart and that happens. And make sure that you've got that sort of 30 degree angle, the feet pointing outwards. There we are. That's it. There we are. Up, up, up. Now, I say up, 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 uh, <clears throat> I might point out that uh, when I say up, I'm usually, well, I might be talking to the pupil, um, the student, you know, but I'm actually also saying it to myself, because what you'll find is people think, oh, well, I do this technique and then have perfect posture for the rest of my life. And the answer is no. Uh, what you will learn is a method for maintaining good posture and reminding yourself from time to time when you lose good posture how to get it back. Mm. So when I say up, up, up in a lesson, I'm usually talking to the student or myself. <laughs> because it's just as easy for me to collapse as it is for the pupil. Uh, obviously, I practice a lot and uh, it's less likely to be uh, so uh, damaging, should we say. Uh, but uh, it is damaging to collapse because the system is sort of malfunctioning when we collapse, you know. We're interfering with the breathing. Now, are you remembering to breathe there, Dom? No. <laughs> <laughs> we forget to breathe, don't we? There we are. So that's it. And uh, we want the breathing to be nice and calm and relaxed, but we want it to be happening. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, what sort of problems do you get when you are singing and, and, and the breathing? I mean, do you run out of breath or does what happens there? I think, um, well, I think, yeah, with time comes the, the breath control. I think what interferes with my breath control is that well, on the first day of drum school, um, I was told that my right shoulder comes up every time I breathe, even uh -huh. more than the left yes, one. Yes. Um, so yeah, that it was my, right. my upper back was totally connected to my breath, even if I was breathing from a lower place, it was just a point of tension. Yeah. Which, when I suddenly became aware of it, I could not stop thinking about for weeks and you obsess and mm. to the point where you can't even think about what you're singing anymore. But then, oh, well. the awareness, with the awareness, um, First comes complete Drop subconsciousness, it. and then, no, and then you suddenly it just clicks, and it becomes yes. second nature, and you know yes. what your thing is, and then um, soften the knees. The more you focus on it, it suddenly becomes second nature, and you relax. Yes, and it's yes. finding that point of being on stage in a state of physical relaxation that mm, allows mm, you mm. to sing what you know you can sing without getting in your own way and not letting sure. notes come Drop out because you're focusing. That's on it. On the tension. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you have this kind of idea of inhibition, I mean, how do you think that would help? Particularly lifting your shoulder. If you just say no. No. Yeah, exactly. That's going to. <laughs> and actually, you could see people doing that. I think on the course. Really. And that you know we all got yeah. to, we all got to know each other's just funny down. things, um, and ticks and things. You know, like mm. people sort of their fingers used to twitch, and you know people would start speaking, and they'd go, "No, right, I'm doing it. I'm start, <laughs> yeah, no, right, I'm starting yeah. again." Yeah, exactly. exactly. Um, and and sometimes we had a sing we had a singing teacher who practically just bullied this person into stopping their their. That's their what habit happens in the end, isn't it? You have go, to be... No, no, no. <laughs> you get beaten with a stick. Yeah, and then actually, and then it goes. But you have with the knowledge comes awareness, and then yeah. you can work on it. But I think when you're younger and untrained, you go into things with less fear because you don't you're not thinking about it. You don't know what mm. your thing is, your bad habit is, and so. Um, you're almost fearless. I used to go on stage and not worry at all about what I was doing. I just used right. to go, oh, fine. Yeah, right. Um, and just thought was totally conscious of what I was, 
or the story I was trying to tell. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And then it's kind of finding a balance between being physically relaxed, thinking of the story you're telling, but also saying no to the things that you know are your ten your place's yeah, attention. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Well, we have to simplify um, how we do that in a way. And so with inhibition, we're saying no to habit. We're saying no to things we repeatedly do, like lifting the shoulder as we're about to sing. Uh, not breathing is a bad habit. You know, collapsing the posture is a bad habit. And so with inhibition, we're really saying no to all of those things that interfere with our ability to do well that which we would do, whether it's singing or, or you know, making a... a some shelves or putting some shelves up or, or whatever you're doing you know it's not just the arts actually uh, you know that can benefit from from having good use um uh, you know um it, you know this whole uh, sort of ability to control ourselves physically is very very useful indeed you know and, and of course in the end it feels very nice because we're not tightening up all the time you see so we're just going to constantly say no that's it now, also, you'll, you'll notice, Tom, uh, mm. that you pull the head back a bit, right? Yeah. Now, if you pull the head back, that's putting the brakes on. Mm. It's not taking the brakes off. You don't get in the car with the brakes on, do you? So no. that um, really is something that we do habitually. We throw the head back. Yeah. Okay? Oh, yeah, I do that a lot. Yeah, and, when, and the, the spine actually comes up to the level of our ears. So if we were to continue uh, putting our fingers in our ears, we would get to the atlas, the anto-occipital joint, which is basically the top of the spine. It's a slightly larger vertebrae that supports the weight of the head. Okay? So just think about that now. And then you can move the head a little bit like this. Yeah, that's it. And then come out of the chair very nicely mm. like that, you see. And that's very, very key to the work as well, is what we do with the head. Throwing the head back is shortening the spine. Lengthening up the back of the neck there gives us length. Now just stand up for me. No. <laughs> Very good. Okay, there we are. Takes a bit of getting used to. However, my uh, job is to try and catch you out, of course. Don't it? And uh, what you want to do is to never be caught out, not by yourself or anyone. So if uh, somebody asks you to do something, you've always got that sort of stop. You've always got that stop, that giving yourself that space, that chance to do nothing, you know? Mm. Now, of course, um, we're talking about this in a very physiological sense. We're talking about the body, we're talking about how we use ourselves. Mm. We're just saying no to doing anything physically. And in the end, we get that nice feeling of release in the structure, that mm. freedom of movement comes from the fact that we're not making too much effort. Mm. And do you think that uh, sometimes, say, with your singing, you're pushing it a bit, you're making too much effort? I think you can focus too hard on how something needs to sound without... Yeah you start to lose sight of how you're making the sound. And yeah. then when you break it down and think, okay, what am I actually doing <laughs> yeah. with my body? And yeah. where am I resonating? And how yeah. does my posture help where I'm resonating? Suddenly, if you break it down into those minute stages, mm. you get to a point where you don't have to think. Like you said, you just be. And you yeah. say no to the tension. You say no to the build up of, mm. I've got to hit this note or the whole song's not going to make sense. Yes. Um, H hitting the note. Yeah is what we call in Alexander Technique the end gain. Yeah. The end gain. And what FM was very uh, excited about uh, was that, in fact, rather than considering the end gain, the results that we want, that we must become people that consider the means whereby. So we don't get the notes sung by tightening up, collapsing, running out of breath. Yeah? Mm. Losing balance. Mm. So rather than thinking about the note we're trying to sing, we must think about those things. Yes, 100%. 100%. <laughs> and uh, a lot of the time people suffer because they're thinking about the end game. Mm. I want this, I want that, I must have this, I must have that. But if they just think about how to get it, mm. the means whereby... There's no strain. There's no strain. There's just this taking their time, working out what it takes to get somewhere. And that's a very good uh, approach. And of course, that is what we mean by inhibition, by stopping and giving ourselves that space. And of course, like I say, you know, we can talk about these things in a very abstract fashion, but it all starts with the body. We're going to think only about the body from a practical point of view. That's what works. So just stop physiologically. Don't do anything. Now, just stand up for me. No. <laughs> there we are. Now, what happened when I said stand up then? Well, you have this impetus 
to move that almost comes from your center it's like yeah, yeah, there yeah. We go. um Drop this. and then it, it forces you to be aware yes but in fact ultimately what happened was nothing nothing yeah nothing happened and usually what happens is we tighten up we anticipate we consider the end gain i must stand up now but when we say no we say oh i'm not going to do anything about it and of course the result is the body remains free of tension and we can come up just easy like that now how's that feel yeah there is an ease there's a flow to it it's, um yeah an impetus that feels natural it doesn't feel forced or but it feels considered it, it feels um, mm, a natural mm. energy Yes, and of course, when we're talking about sort of something like singing, and we're, talk we're really talking about all these things that interfere with our ability to do it. Now, we've worked on it to a very high level. I mean, you got to what grade six classical singing or something? Did you know I, I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember the grade. Like, well, it was, I, know, yes, I remember it was, you doing those. Yes, very I did hard. do them. I just, yeah, I think I. I so, mean... in other words, you've done all the training you need to do, you've done all the work. Yeah. Now the only thing that gets in the way is ourselves. Yeah. So, we're going to think about it uh, in that respect that mm. just standing up. Just walking across the room, doing stuff, singing, doesn't matter what it is, building shelves. Mm. We're constantly interfering with the way that we go about doing stuff because we consider the end game. So inhibition is very much about saying, no, 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 no. I'm going to stop that sort of impulse, that's it, that instinct, and I'm going to consider mm. the means whereby. How am I going to do this? But it's a practice, isn't it? Because yes. I think taking singing lessons again after six years, mm. What's come out of it is that I've gone back to some habits, but then uh, developed, habits, yeah, but yeah. then developed yeah. completely new ones. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I just uh, were not yeah. a thing. Well, absolutely. That have come yes. with new tensions. Yeah. It's come with having a more office-based job. It's come with like all those tensions, and yes. you think, oh, why do I, uh, why do, why does that hurt, or why, do, why am yeah. I holding? Yeah. And so, yeah, it's a practice of awareness of now. Again, I'm going through that whole process, and I'm learning new things about yes. what I do and then you know my, my new teacher will say you know it's actually the first note you sing before the top note you need to give yourself that springboard and yes. if you're holding anything on that springboard then mm, why would mm. you be able to get the top bit you yeah know? yeah um, mm, and it isn't mm. necessarily even in a soprano sense where things sort of just float up and over it's more when you're actually using a chesty and belty a part of your voice where you really need to feel it through the ground yeah yeah and if you're not rooted and you're not um you know especially with belt i think and that take, yeah, well, taking your chest voice higher let's have a look at that i mean if you are if you singer. are going to sing that first note now mm. and you have all the answers let me say we're going to do that now we're going to sing a note mm. and let's just say okay so we're going to sing that note uh how, how does that make you feel the fact that you're going to sing this note now it makes me, th yes, it, it, well, I think because I, yeah, I will think about the stages as to b before I open my mouth, but I think that's come with training. Mm, yeah, yeah. Um, but, but, but if I was to just go into a big note now, like a big belt note, yeah. I would I would definitely tense. Yes, you sort of tense up. But, and it's a mental block that I'm still getting over. But but, but would you not have that feeling of, I hope this sounds well, good? Yes, always. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. It's a, it's a mental block. It's going to be an anxiety, isn't it? Also, about if whether it sounds good or not. It's a fear. Yeah, yeah, but that fear it never is goes away. a reflex, isn't it? It's mm. called the fear reflex. And but the thing about it is, is that we can get rid of that fear reflex by just focusing on something else. And that something else in the Alexander technique will be your weight bearing points, mm. your full height. Yeah, you'll be saying no, stop, I'm not going to do anything. And then all the training that's already in there, mm. but you've just got out of the way of it. Yeah. Do you see? Yeah, absolutely. So, so it's the means whereby, and the means whereby isn't necessarily the set of instructions that you have from your singing teacher to sing in this way and use that technique and blah, blah, blah. Mm. It's actually just more simple than that. Just yeah. say no. And also when I think you watch a performer, um, when they know what they're doing in that way, they look relaxed. Yes. And, and as an audience member, you relax. You feel it, you feel it. They're yeah. in control of, of what they're doing. And I well, think, yeah. um, and that goes for any, not just performing, it goes for anyone in life if some people yeah. have a certain energy or an yes. aura about them and it's because they take they have an awareness they take their time they move well yeah it there's a, an attraction to that isn't oh, there yes. people listen well, it's part of the pleasure of it isn't it to see somebody do something well mm. and that comes with experience of course but what we're trying to do in the alexander is cultivate the right state of mind the right state physically that we may go into anything really perhaps for the first time 
and um, and be able to be relatively competent. Mm. Yeah, uh, I mean, when I have uh, tried to learn the other some technique, somebody once said to me, you know, the most important thing isn't this sort of getting in and out of the chair work. You know, what you need is, is learning that stuff and then going off and applying it to different things. Yeah. So I have done that, applying it to piano, flute, guitar, uh, you know, horse riding, uh, many different things, screwing, um, you know, the shelves up. How does the screwdriver fit into the, you know, uh, nail head and so on, or screw head or whatever. You know, yeah. just everything that you do, you suddenly feel, okay, let's just ground myself a little bit and see what the difference uh, in this is. It's amazing how quickly you can change <laughs> And from doing that, from, yeah. the, from that daily awareness and practice, is that you yeah. know it, it suddenly can happen very quickly, you know. Yes, exactly. Um, so now, Dom, just stop a second there now, and you're just going to take a moment to become aware of your body, and you're just going to stop, and you're going to think about your lengthening up, uh, your your sitting bones. Can you feel the sitting bones there? Yeah, yeah. That's it, and you're just going to do nothing. Really, do nothing. Take a moment. Now, just stand up for me. No. Good. <laughs> Look, there's no catching you out today, is there? I, I take great pleasure usually in catching people out, but uh, you're just a little bit too quick off the mark for me today. <laughs> yeah, there's, still, there's still time yet. <laughs> but uh, just stand up for me. No. Good, there we are. So we say no, and by saying no, we get that sense of giving ourselves that space, of breaking the habits, now just find those weight bones. Bring the feet a little together. Mm -hmm. That's it. Remember that thirty degree angle. Oh, yes. Feet pointing out. That just releases the leg from tension. It does. It releases the backs of your knees instantly. Yeah. There we are. And so we're going to think about that as we go up. I would say I definitely lock my knees when I sing that's as well. It, there we are. That's it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, and that's. Then you, and then suddenly your bum's clenching. Your back's arched. Yeah. 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 Well, that's it's, the it's beginning like building, of the end. It's isn't building it? blocks, isn't it? Yeah. It really is. It really is. Stacking. Like, just take a little walk around the room for me there. That's it, very good. And turn the head, look, follow the eyes, that's very nicely. So how's that feeling now, Don? Great, I feel so, feel so tall. <laughs> <laughs> come back to the chair. Not the short one. That's it, that's it. Now just come back into your back. And what you might notice as well is that there's, a, there's an opening in the back here. Mm. That the, there's more back, yeah? And that you're coming into your back. Uh, now look what you've done there. You've oh. thrown the head back. Ah, uh, yeah. Now, remember keeping the. Uh, oh, you have to keep the, the the neck long at the back, and that will allow the spine to lengthen. Remember, the spine is at the top, yeah, mm. between the ears there. Mm. So you throw the head back at your peril. It's like putting the brakes on, and then when you don't do it, you can come out very nicely there. That's it, very nicely, and you're going up, going up, 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 up. I just take that moment to find the weight bearing points. Oh, no need to adjust. Yes, just take that time, and then the, even the breath comes, right? <laughs> you get it's out like, of the way. It's like sort of breaking the surface of water, actually. Yes. <laughs> like when you, like, because you think about it, you, the first thing you do is you want to breathe up. Yeah. Yeah. Breathe in. Yeah, very good uh, way of looking at mm -hmm. it, yes. It feels like breaking the surface. Mm, mm, mm. So another thing that we're doing here, of course, is we're giving ourselves a chance to get in flow. A lot of people will be aware of this concept of getting in flow, and flow, uh, people have a whole sort of philosophical approach and attitude about that. What we're doing here is we're giving ourselves that chance, that chance to get in flow with our own body, our own breathing. Take that time, you know, just to let go of all the tensions and just float through life a little bit more with awareness. Okay, so coming up there, I'm just going to take a walk. And that's your first uh, introduction to the Alexander Technique. So what have we learned? We've learned about weight bearing points, full height, very important. Mm -hmm. We've learned to take time to say no to habit. And we're going to think about giving ourselves that space to consider the means whereby and not consistently obsessed uh, with the end gain. Lasting after outcomes without considering the means whereby. Mm. Very good. And we'll leave you there. <laughs>